Welcome back, everybody. It has been a fantastic Thursday. Canada's daytime sports talk show continues. Luca Kanji can talk about uh, Grey Cup memories better than anybody. He's a uh, former Saskatchewan Rough Rider, Hamilton Tiger Cat, Edmonton Eskimo, a CFL All-Star. Played in the league from 06 to 2014, won a Grey Cup with Canada's team in 07. And he joins us today from uh, the GTA, I believe. How you doing, Luca? Hey, Rod. How are you? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, you sound uh, 100%. Looking, you haven't aged a day, my friend. Um, <laughs> it's great. It's Grey Cup Unite week. How much have you been thinking about your Grey Cup experience this week? Actually, I, I tuned into the uh, the journey for the 2013 uh, Rough Rider uh, Grey Cup because obviously we, we lost uh, playing for the Pie Cats. Uh, I got to see my boy Durant, and I was happy for him. And there were some, uh, obviously, some clips I wasn't uh, privy to. Uh, so it was pretty cool to see that. Uh, hey, anytime Grey Cup week comes around, I'm always thinking about living back in the memory lane, going back memory lane, looking back at the times we we played in the championship game, whether we won or lost, would like to have won some more, but you know, what are you going to do? Hey, let me, uh, let me ask you, where are you by the way? Last I heard, uh, our good friend Luke told me that you're in the Toronto area. Where are you at? Yeah, still in, still in Toronto. Uh, I work uh, for a management consulting firm in downtown Toronto. So that's kind of what I'm doing now these days. Uh, I have, since we last spoke Rod, I have two children now, uh, just gave birth to uh, my baby girl, Sophie, who's now just under a month old. And I have a two-year-old, uh, Mateo. So I've got two kids. My hands are full right now, man. Hey, no kidding. Full. Congratulations. In Saskatchewan. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Yeah, yeah, big change. And obviously, you're working from home. But I want to. we're going to talk about those great cups. I'm going to start with 07, because I was on a podcast last night, and the guy said, compare the 07 team to the 2013 team. And I said, guys... 180 degrees different. 2013, the coach and GM were told, if you don't win, you're fired. 07, while there was still pressure, nobody expected you guys to win but yourselves. That was a special group, but it was a lot different than 2013. What do you remember about that ragtag bunch in 07? Uh, I, listen, we were the heartbreak kids. In my, in my view, it was. I remember that year. It was a special year. We had a really special bond uh, in the locker room. We were very tight. Uh, and that, that, that locker room continues throughout the rest of the years. Even in the back-to-back ones we lost to Montreal, we had a very tight-knit group. Um, and I remember that year specifically, we always seemed to be able to come back. And I remember no matter what game it was, if we were down in the fourth quarter, no matter how much time was left, we just always felt that we could always come back and, and win it. Uh, that was the type of group we had in there. We just always had confidence in whatever we had. And, and even if our record wasn't necessarily the greatest in the league or whatever the case may be, we always felt that we could, uh, we could win the game regardless of who we were playing against. And, you know, we strung together some great wins. And, uh, yeah, it was it was uh, a lot to, to take in. It was a lot of fun. And, you know, that, that Grey Cup specifically was in Toronto, so I had a lot of family around. Uh, we were able to come, come to the game. It was, uh, it was a very special moment. Well, and you kicked some big field goals in that Grey Cup because I was there and I called it, and it was 57,000, I think, in Rogers Center, packed to the gills, and do you yeah. notice that? I mean, obviously you're running out of the tunnel in your basic hometown, in the home of the Blue Jays and the Argos, and you're just, or are you locked in on the game? <laughs> I've never really asked somebody that. <laughs> How much does the atmosphere take take hold of you, or do you need to block it out? Well, you certainly need to block it out, but it certainly is more difficult uh, come the Grey Cup game. Um, you know, I would love to sit and tell you, yeah, I don't think about the, the crowd and the the, the gravity of the game it's it's a big game and you do your best as as a pro to kind of tune it out uh but certainly it is a difficult challenge when you're trying to focus in on the the challenge at hand as to win the game and do your part as part of the team to make that happen i'll tell you right now the first the first field goal attempt i missed and i remember my legs were shaking <laughs> like i was so <laughs> nervous because of the crowd the big you know how important the game was and i just remember um, it, it was just so difficult for, for me to kind of lock in. It was, I was nervous, a nervous wreck. And then uh, there and after, I was able to kind of lock in and hit the rest of my field goals for the rest of the game. But uh, I do remember that one kind of, and, you know, I had to kind of shake it off and that, okay, let's get focused here. Um, but it is certainly, it's a lot of fun. The emotions uh, that come with the game, the whole week, there's a lot to take in as a player. Uh, you want to 
certainly take in as much as you can because these are memories that are going to last a lifetime. But at the same time, you have to stay focused on the job at hand and what you're trying to do and try to accomplish uh, with, with your team. Amazing story. I did not know that. You never told me that your legs were shaking, and I get it now. I'm, I'm glad no, that I'm shaking. asked. Yeah, but then to flip it in 2013, you come in with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, but you're not the only ex rider. You got Fan Twos, who wasn't overly beloved because he left. And let's not get into the Henry Burris saga here with Ryan. You remember. Like 90 minutes, two hours before the game, the guys came out for the early outs. I don't know if you were part of it. And the crowd was, Henry, like two hours before the game. I'm like, these people are oh, yeah. into it. Talk, talk about that oh, coming yeah. in as, as the visitor that day in 2013 to Taylor Field. Yeah, I mean, knowing, you know, when we won uh, the, the East, uh, semi, East final, uh, knowing we were playing against Saskatchewan, going into Saskatchewan, we knew <laughs> it was just going to be madness. Um, you know, even for the players on the team, the podcasts who haven't necessarily been in Saskatchewan during those crazy moments, it was like, guys, this is going to be next level. Um, and so, certainly, when we got in there, it was it was the crowd was crazy. It was nuts. It was it was a lot of fun. I was getting chirped at on the sidelines too. I remember I saw some fans were chirping me on the sidelines too, which is uh, all in fun. And um, it, it was. The atmosphere I remember for that particular Great Cup was was just absolutely uh, crazy, and it was just so much fun to be a part of. I'll tell you, Rod, the number one of the major things I miss about playing are the emotions that come with the game, preparing for the game, the you know pre-game, during the game, the big kicks, the big plays. Like those are the things that you you know for certainly for me I miss the most, and you know especially when you talk about Great Cups and you know playing in those moments. Um, you know, it's even elevated that much more. And, you know, you just miss those big moments. And, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we started off that game doing very well. And I remember, to me, the turning point was when, we, you know, we forced the fumble from Durant and it landed in uh, Sheets Corey hands. Sheets' hands. And yeah. he just took it. And I was just like, because at that point, we were actually playing very well. It, you know, we were forcing the, the offense, the rider offense uh, kind of, at a, at, a, at a sink, and that kind of just sparked it and just got out of control. After that point. Yeah, you you kicked the opening points of the game, if I'm not mistaken, for the Tie Cats. Yeah. And the interesting yeah. thing, you played in two Grey Cups with two different teams, and you had one coach, Ken Austin. If you were yeah. if you were coaching a team in the Grey Cup week, what would you tell them in terms of staying out of the distractions? Yeah, I mean, I would. What I would tell them is just simply. Um, you know, there's a lot of time to celebrate and enjoy the success after the job is done. There's no bigger disappointment than losing the Great Cup final. Um, you know, it, it, there just isn't. And so as much as you want to enjoy that week, there's ways in which you can do it and take in the memories and enjoy that week without partaking too much into it where it takes you off your game. And so what I would say is every player knows what they need to do in order to prepare for themselves to perform at the optimal level. And that shouldn't change just because it's great cup week. And just let let them know there's plenty of time to celebrate after. There's more than enough time in the off season to celebrate, drink out of the great cup, celebrate with your friends and family, and certainly celebrate with your team. Uh, you know, it was interesting on Twitter, I saw someone post a video on uh, when we came back uh, from the airport and the just the madness that was in the airport after we won. Uh, in 07 and like those are moments that you can enjoy which will be uh, much grand more, much more grand than than it would be if you were to lose the game uh, who so posted you know, that would be my that would who be my posted answer. that video I'd like to go back and see it do you remember I can't remember I have to go back on my on my feed it was uh it was a fan I can't remember I was a fan. Uh, listen I'll tell that story yeah. after we let you go but I have never I will never in my lifetime experience something like that again <laughs> that was oh, insane no. yeah. that was coming for the people that don't know that those, was coming home from vancouver that, you know when my kids grow up i'm gonna tell them about it. this was coming home from winning the west final in vancouver that's what you're talking about when the whole airport was jammed to welcome the riders back is that the time yeah. or, or yeah, that was the west final that's right that was west yeah final. um from a viewer gregory lee wants to know luca who's your favorite soccer team uh ac milan AC Milan. Okay, there yeah. you go. Yeah, my and, dad grew up as an AC Milan fan, but you know, to be honest, I'm not that hardcore 
into league soccer. I watch it certainly, especially Champions League. Uh, but I'm more about uh, the, watching the Azuri play when it comes to the Euro Cup and World Cup. That's uh, that's what I really cheer for. Well, that's one thing that we love doing here is getting the viewers' questions answered by our interview guests. There's not many shows doing that. Lastly, Luca, you've noticed the CFL is not playing in 2020. I'm not sure how closely you're following the league, but because you live in Toronto, I'd just like to know your take on how this league can come back and maybe what it needs to do to stay alive and thrive in this country. Yeah, listen, I'm going to be <laughs> – uh, I'm not as close as I – I, as maybe I should be, but here's what I'll say. It's about time that we have the commissioners and the league uh, lock step in arms with the players union. Okay. Um, you know, what I was following, what was, I was hearing was a complete disconnect between the league and the union in terms of getting players back on the field to play. And that's, that's just disheartening. Honestly, it's gotta be, it's disheartening as a, as an alumni, it's, a, it's disheartening as a fan. Um, you know, when you watch the NBA and the commissioner there, uh, look what they have done. Working with the players to get the job done in terms of getting a bubble set up uh, in order to deal with COVID-19. Uh, in, my, in my view, in order for them to get back to, to where the league needs to be, the, the, the union and the players union and the league, they need to be at the table together, working together hand in hand. And, and to be honest with you, that just doesn't seem to happen with, with the CFL. Um, it seems to be like the owners and the league that does what their part and the union's kind of left to the side. And I think that we got to come together now and, and really start to work together, especially during this time to get the league back and get, get the guys playing. Uh, we have to get the, we have to get games in. Um, you know, you can't go another season w without, uh, without playing another game. And, and there's ways that we can do it, be creative, think innovatively to get the, the games in, to get the fans engaged. With the technology we have today, there's definitely things that we can do. What's not okay is for us to sit here and say, hey, we just, you know, the league saying, we, 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 we've talked to the players, the players, you know, we, you haven't talked to us in weeks or months. Like, that, that's not okay. It, it's just, it's just not tolerable. You know, that's the Luca that I know. I knew you would have a thoughtful reason to answer, <laughs> and I don't even know if you were ready for it. I didn't tee up on what I was going to ask, but you yeah. nailed it. Well, um, <laughs> Luca, thank you. I uh, appreciate you. Uh, hope to see you maybe next time we're in Toronto, man. But glad to see everything's going so well. Yeah, listen, after this is all done, I would love to get back in Saskatchewan. Uh, I haven't been there in a while. I want to see the new stadium uh, from a fan's point of view. And, uh, yeah, I, I definitely want to be out there as well, Rod. And thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure chatting with you. And uh, great job on the show, man. Loving it. It's, uh, keep, keep doing what you're doing. We will. Thank you, man. Good to see you. Thanks for the time. Okay. Luke Kanji joining us from uh, his home office in the Toronto area. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.